So, uh, you know, 10, 12 years ago, and I was talking to Mark Shuttleworth about the same thing of like, you know, we were having the AMI and you know this very well, the AMI sprawl issue. Um, is there some parallel world to how we're looking at Kubernetes and having a, a cube, cube sprawl or cube operator sprawl issue? Uh, talk about that for a second. I, I think that it ultimately comes down to your, your mindset higher up the stack will inform your mindset lower down the stack, right? So the decisions you make about your application architecture uh, and your, your tolerance of state and change uh, and eventual consistency, all of those principles are going to define what you need from your infrastructure. You can't work it bottom up. It can only ever be driven top down. So if you've got an application that cares about whether a particular machine is on or off or whether it's got a particular piece of configuration, it kind of goes back to that classic uh, pets versus cattle conversation that kind of spawned the whole DevOps movement, right? Is, you know, Just all, all your that servers for those that don't know. Have all of your servers, are they pets? Have they all got names? If they're sick, do you take them to the vet? Or is it more like being on a farm where you know they've all got barcodes and numbers and if one's looking a bit poorly you probably just take it to the abattoir sooner you know, there's no emotion in cloud infrastructure this stuff is just commodity it's there for as long as it's there you should feel completely comfortable blowing it away whenever you need and if you embrace that mindset where your infrastructure is disposable then your state has to be disposable as well so the state of a machine needs to be something you can recreate from software that sits in a repository. If you can't recreate the required state from a repository, you can't afford for that machine to disappear. So ultimately, your sprawl comes because you're too dependent on state. So, so this then leads me to the emerging importance of GitOps, because you're saying if it can't be related to code, um, you have a problem. So, so maybe talk about, I mean, it was just like yesterday, DevOps was the thing uh, and, and like GitOps is emerging or uh, talk, talk about the, what is the distinction between DevOps and GitOps um, and um, how do you think through those? Honestly, I feel like the tech industry has put itself under so much pressure to give the same stuff, new words to appear relevant. It's all much the same thing, right? It's all based on, you know, variants and versions of the same principles and the same beliefs, right? Manage your infrastructure and your configuration as code. All the principles that you would apply to a modern software development lifecycle, apply that to your infrastructure. Think about the concept of releases. Think about the concept of pull requests, automated testing, everything that you do around CICD. We've been applying that to infrastructure pipelines now in the teams that I've worked with for four or five years. There's nothing new or modern around some of this stuff. It's just becoming, because the applications upstack and modernizing, this stuff is now becoming more prevalent as an operating model underneath because there are more and more applications available today that are tolerant of an infrastructure management technique like that. 